Hello. Today I'd like to discuss the use of seismic arrival times to constrain the shape of the Earth. Um, this is a sample seismogram taken from the San Francisco earthquake of 1906 as observed at Contingen. The arrival time for this event is that point at the extreme left of the figure that is marked by a red line with a single P. That's when the instrument first started recording deviations from its default position. But the event we're going to be focusing on today is the Macquarie Rise earthquake. This was a magnitude 8.1 event that occurred on Christmas Eve. Macquarie Rise is to the south of New Zealand. It's a subantarctic island and the data I use for this study is obtained from the IRIS database. Um, I'm using several hundred sites and all I'm using are the locations of the sites and the times at which um, they first started recording this event. Um, new arrivals are marked with a blue circle. The epicenter of the event is marked with a red star. Um, this is an azimuth equidistant plot focused on the epicenter of the earthquake. And already we can see that the new arrivals seem to be roughly equidistant from the epicenter of the earthquake. So the seismic energy from this event is spreading out in a roughly circular pattern under this projection. We are at the mercy of where we do or do not have seismic stations. So unfortunately our coverage is a little bit irregular, um, but we, that's just a constraint we have to live with. But as we move to um, areas where there are more and more seismic stations, we can see more and more of the circumference of the circle. So we can see that this seismic energy is spreading out like ripples on a pond. So this is very regular. This is pretty easy to understand and it uh, agrees very well with our intuitive um, picture of what should be going on um, in an earthquake. Um, obviously, there's much more sophisticated analysis that's possible. Um, now we're going to do the same exercise, except we're going to use a flat earth projection. And again, we see the new arrivals marked in blue, and already we're starting to see what the problem might be. Um, under this projection, the arrival times are not spreading out in a circle. And indeed, they're traveling to distant parts of the Earth without traveling through the intervening portions of the Earth. Um, and instead of um, traveling uh, from the epicenter in a circular path, they seem to be converging on the opposite side of the Earth in a circular path. The physics in this particular representation is not very intuitive. Um, while it may be possible to construct some uh, internal structure that might cause this sort of uh, dispersion of seismic uh, energy, um, it would really only work for this one event. Um, and uh, your problem then becomes that you don't just have one event, you have many tens of thousands of seismic events. And for each of these events, the energy is observed to spread out in a circular pattern from the epicenter. Um, it does not behave in a um, manner that is consistent with uh, uh, the assumption that the Earth is flat. Um, in order for all of these events to have energy that um, spreads out radially um, at a relatively uh, regular velocity, um, requires that um, they be taking place on or within a sphere. So from this total aggregation of evidence, um, we conclude that it is more likely that the Earth is a sphere than that the Earth is some sort of um, flat body. Um, now, if you want to refute this, please feel free. Thank you for your attention.